Jabberwonka. Message, Doctor. The message. Doctor, 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 Doctor,
very helpful. And they said, look, you know, we have another program. It's called UCLA Extension. You can do directing, acting, producing, uh, and you don't need an undergrad. Why don't you look into that? So I did, and it was exactly what I was looking for. Um, it was an incredible program. It took less time and expense than a, than a master's. And uh, yeah, I did that in acting, directing, and producing in 2008. And what, uh, can you tell us a, bit, a little bit some, about some of the projects that you did? Definitely. Uh, well, when I was in school, I did a lot of um, films with other students who are from other countries. So that was really cool. Um, just all, all, all different things. I'm trying to think back now. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was pretty eclectic. My, um, I'm trying to think of what my favorite project was. Um, there was a lot of, I, for some reason, I feel like the student films tend to be quite gory. There was always some element of horror. Like I, oh, I seem to recall being killed several times, <laughs> most of the films. <laughs> um, but that was good. I mean, you know, that's not my, I don't like that genre at all, but it's good to just, uh, you know, get uncomfortable and, and stretch your muscles as an actor and, um, and then after that, or actually during during that time, I made a a short film um, called La Via Dolce, The Sweet Life. Uh, and it was just about um, the struggling artist girl who had a dysfunctional relationship with her mother. And she's trying to uh, figure out how to show up in the world. Um, and uh, yeah, that was fun. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, what did you like? What What are some of your takeaways from all the education that you had? Like, you know, from from like uh, studying it to doing it. Like, um, what uh, can you give us a taste of? Like, what you learned or what you would have? I don't know the, the do's and don'ts, uh, the perils and the the yeah. Habits. Right. Well, that's a great question because I was pretty. Um, specific in terms of what I wanted to learn and how I wanted to learn it. Um, what I loved about the extension classes, it was all people who are in the trenches every day and then they come at night and they say, hey, this is what I learned, mm -hmm. you know? So for me, if I spend too much time sitting down and learning the do's and don'ts, it actually um, paralyzes me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's actually not helpful at all. <laughs> Yeah. So what I liked about this was it, they would say, okay, they'd give us a bit of, you know, do this, don't do that. And then, then it was kind of up to us to just go out there and make stuff, you know? Um, and it, the, the things that we made were sometimes related to the class and sometimes they weren't, you know, sometimes it's other people's projects. Um, it wasn't as if you had, you know, a big thesis film at the end and you had to pass. It wasn't anything to that um, extent it was more like assignments uh which i liked because i'm like how can you grade art i, I don't know <laughs> that's just that's just me i'm like you just do it and then you know some people like it some people hate it you can't really um i think it's kind of hard i think it's hard to grade um so yeah so that was that was good for me it was just enough information but not too much <laughs> so i didn't get i call it analysis paralysis um and and it gave me you know it just made me even more excited to go out and do my own stuff and make mistakes and learn and that's really the only the only way you can learn truly i think is by doing it yeah um, so yeah that was that was I th for me it was really worthwhile um and and then after that i actually got a work visa so i was able to work um in America and I, I got to, I got a commercial agent. So I was able to do, just jump right into commercials, which to me are really, really great form medium of um, visual medium. You know, you have to be very quick in your storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that experience and the experience of having done commercials has really informed how I tell stories. <laughs> And um, 
so from from acting and producing those smaller things to what uh what like um can you tell us about modeling that maybe somebody some people that are wanting to get into it should know i know it's changed a lot everything's changed a lot in these last five years especially yeah. but um what's the deal with modeling how'd you like it what's uh what's a uh, give us some horror stories of it give us some yeah. pros and cons yeah well like i mentioned before when i was 18 i i attempted it and i was way too shy and i didn't like it i didn't like how people spoke to me as if i was a horse or something you know look oh look at your teeth turn around oh you know they say things in front of you as if you're not there yeah. like you're a ghost or a child or something it's bizarre um so I really didn't like that I thought it was degrading and you know it, it was not um interesting to me so I I dropped it and uh it was actually after I'd done the film school I had um I met a director in Los Angeles um Graham Clifford, I'll say his name, and uh, we hit it off and he gave me some advice. He said, you know, have you ever done modeling? I think you could do it and, you know, you can do it while pursuing acting. They're, they are related. Um, I think it would be a good move. And mm -hmm. so I kind of thought about it and, and I said, okay, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> so at about age 28, which is when most people <laughs> have uh, retired from their career mm -hmm. age 28 I said yeah I'm ready you know I have a thicker skin now people can say ridiculous things to me and I'll just you know that I'll let it just roll off my back mm -hmm. um so I think that and and when I started doing it I actually really enjoyed it I was like what I get you know paid to walk down this not I, I never did runway but I did some commercial work um I mean not commercial um like morning shows. I did morning shows and things where you, you have the latest trends and you know you walk in a circle. And, and I thought, wow, this is actually great. It's pretty effortless and uh, it's fun. And it's, it's sort of, it's creative and you get to meet different people. And I, I really enjoyed it. I was actually shocked at how much I enjoyed it. Um, and I like going to different locations and you know, you're constantly, you're never bored, really, um, which which I appreciate. Um, and, and the thing is now it's changed so much and it's the paradigms that were existed before are completely gone. So I think if anyone has an interest in it, like, and there's so many different ways to market yourself now. Um, it's, yeah, it's really, really completely different ball game. And I, one of my role models is Mae Musk, who is just killing it at, I believe she's in her 60s and I think she's she's been at it for a long time and now she's a supermodel and uh, I think that you know people can have a much longer career and they can take more control of it uh, it's not in the hands of the agent per se uh, so that's exciting and yeah I just think it's it's good because people have more control over their careers now than they did before yeah um so the uh, what are the biggest differences between doing what you like to do in the United States and doing them in Toronto? What do you think? Are Canadians just nicer people than Americans? <laughs> well, we do have, there's definitely cultural differences, which I obsess about and think about quite often. And what are those? Uh, I mean, we, in Canada, we tend to be pretty polite but then also sometimes it's a bit confusing to know what the person is saying. So it kind of has a double side to it. Um, I found when I was in America, like quite often, I, I felt that people were, I perceived people as being rude. And that's clearly, I would have to tell myself on a daily basis, that's not rudeness. That's just a way of communicating that I interpret as being you know, too forward or something. But um, I actually came to really appreciate that forwardness uh, or whatever you call it in, in um, American culture. And, and now that I'm back here, I'm actually 
yeah, I, sometimes I'm confused by what people are saying or what they're meaning. And I, and I would just appreciate some directness. Yeah. So there's, yeah, there's definitely, there's some nuances to the cult, to the different cultures. And yes, we speak the same language, but there's, there's a lot of uh, very subtle differences in communication and uh, navigating those has been interesting to say the least. <laughs> and so what do you, um, do you, um, still let's see here what's the i gotta stop saying um so much that's i know <laughs> i'm um, um i looked at somebody's podcast i did and it was like every other word's like um but that's what you get with a non-scripted i'll get over the um stuff later but um there you go um <laughs> um what are you working on now that you're excited about besides we'll get to the podcast yeah. thing in a little bit but what are you right working on right now that as an actor or model or both that you're excited about? At this yeah, point? well, I actually, so uh, being stuck at home and, you know, all these things happening in the world um, during the pandemic, it was, it's been a crazy time. And I had this summer um, with Black Lives Matter, with that m movement happening, it really, um, like everyone it affected everyone and i was thinking what you know how do how does my my storytelling how does this is you know how can they inter interlace i guess mm -hmm. is the word um and a friend of mine uh who had been a lawyer or he, he is a lawyer and he We'd been hanging out and he had been talking about this lawyer who he worked with um a canadian lawyer named charles roach and almost every day this gentleman came up in our conversation because charles roach was a social activist um a lawyer he represented people in toronto who you know maybe couldn't pay for services normally he represented immigrants he was a huge con contributor to the cultural and political fabric of the city and so we just kept talking about him and then the idea came up like why don't we make a documentary about him and I couldn't believe that I had lived in the city for 10 years and I had never heard of him that to me was shocking I mean he started Carabana which is one of the biggest cultural events here uh, celebrates the Caribbean islands dancing music everything it's it's massive he also was one of the uh, people who started the special investigations unit which is the governing body that oversees what the police do and uh yeah, so the more I learned about him, the more I just thought, oh my God, like this is everyone, every Canadian should know about him. Mm -hmm. So in the height of the pandemic, uh, my friend who had worked with him, we decided to make this documentary. And so we gathered together people who had worked with him, who were friends with him, um, some family members, and we, we asked them, you know, about him and just learned so much about this phenomenal person. Uh, who he did he passed away in 2012 so that is actually currently in the works um, I directed it and am producing it and I'm super super excited to share this story with not only Canadians it, I mean it is a very Canadian story but I it's, it's the whole world he just every single day this man stood up for what he believed in and that to me is incredible and and rare and it needs to be shared and is that going to be a feature? It's going to be a short. A short. Yeah. So how long uh, do you think before you finish it? Uh, I'd give it a I give it a month. We're just <laughs> waiting on some some footage, uh, but I I really think that people will be really excited to see it, and um, I think that we need role models. Um, you know, not they don't have to be present with us now but he definitely was completely ahead of his time everything that he did was what we're saying what people are saying now you know the work that we need to do now he knew it 30 years ago and he was you know in the streets protesting he was meeting with politicians he did constantly uh he was constantly fighting for justice 
and um, what was he, he was also an anti-monarch. I'm sorry to interrupt. Just just... Really, really interesting. What was he fighting for? Your voice kind of broke up for a second. What is was he fighting? Oh, for? he was. Oh, uh, justice, justice um, for, for I mean, racial equality. And another another really interesting thing about him is he was an anti-monarchist, and he believed that in Canada um, we should not have to take the oath to the Queen in order to become a citizen. And he actually was born in Trinidad, and he refused to take the oath to the Queen to become a citizen of Canada, and thereby he did not receive his Canadian citizen citizenship. So he could not travel under a Canadian passport. He couldn't vote for school board trustees and he couldn't become a judge. A lot of people thought he would be a phenomenal judge, but he couldn't. And he actually died without becoming a citizenship. I mean, a citizen. So that's actually part of the, the movement of the movie is that we're going to um, revisit that and see if there's a way for him to become a citizen because he actually really wanted to, but without, he refused to take an oath of allegiance to the queen because he said that she represented a racist monarchy and he didn't believe in that. Oh, wow. Sounds like there's a lot of story there. There's a lot of story. Yeah. 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 And so are you, um, uh, besides that, that's a huge thing to be putting that together. What do yeah. you, uh, are you uh, going out on auditions and or are you modeling at all right now? Or are you? Yeah, um, a little bit. I mean, I before we're in lockdown again. So uh, for until May 20th. So nothing's happening for me right now. Um, but I am auditioning for projects in Los Angeles and projects here that will happen in the future. <laughs> um, yeah, I've actually gotten the Zoom audition down, which is exciting. And I actually love, I love not having to drive somewhere and pay for parking and, you know, wait in line and all that. Um, yes, the social aspect is missed, but honestly, the logistics of going to auditions, I have really loved this pause. Yeah. And I really hope moving forward that people um, figure out a way casting figures out a way to make it easier for the actor um, because I just I do not believe that we all have to be in the room there's technology has shown us that we can just you know pop on the recorder and it has a very similar effect and it's uh, I think it's more respectful to the actors and the artists and their schedules <laughs> and um, honestly for me that part has been a huge win I actually was going to a an event, uh, an app, so that actors could shoot themselves at home um, instead of going to auditions all the time. Mm -hmm. Because especially in LA, I mean, you go to one audition, your whole day could be, you know, blown. Um, and yes, I'm grateful for the opportunity, but there are, I think that the industry needs to be more efficient. There's mm -hmm. so much waste and there's so much wasted time and, uh, and this pandemic has proven that we don't all need to drive somewhere in order to uh, for people to understand what we look like and how we speak and what our work is. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it's, there's no going back from here. We, we've, um, I think we've already, already went through the threshold of newness here with the the way. I mean, I remember auditioning stuff for stuff, and you drive for forty five minutes from from it's only like probably like five miles to get there in LA, but it's like takes yeah. you 45 minutes. And then and, and you they schedule your auditions at two or two 30. You do your thing for two seconds. Then you're out on the street going, okay, I just paid for parking. I'm stuck in traffic. Yeah. Uh, this is ridiculous. And, um, yeah. and then you don't get the part and you're just like, well, I just wasted all that yeah. time. And yeah, people are, yeah it's, it's making sense that we do this more efficiently. I mean, I mean, it just makes so much more sense to do it this way. Definitely. Like, uh, yeah, and yeah, I mean, I do think that there are certain things that have to be done in the room, like chemistry and certain, you know, when you get to a certain point, and definitely you have to be in the room. Yeah. But for the most part, a lot of it can be done from home. Are uh, Canadians funnier than Americans? We are. I, well, <laughs> it's, a different, it's a different type of humor. We're, we tend to be very self deprecating. Mm -hmm. which I didn't understand that that was another nuance that took 
me a minute, um, like five years to understand in, in the US is that I would make fun of myself very often. And a lot of um, American people that I was interacting with, they thought I was that I had low self-esteem and that I was insulting myself. And I, I, it took me so long to realize this. I'm like, oh, it's just a different sense of humor. It's more British and it's mm -hmm. more like, you know, if you like someone, you make fun of them type thing. Yeah. And Irish too, where you take the piss out of them. And uh, so Canadians like to take the piss out of themselves. And it took me so long to realize that that read as um, not confident in the state. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that took a while, but it's a different sense of humor for sure. And I, I think it's Canadians tend to be like a little dark, like our humor is a bit dark, I think because of the weather or something. Um, and uh, yeah, but Canadian humor is having a real heyday right now, which is great. Yeah. Um, well, they've always been really like, I grew up with SCTV and also, uh, um, obviously, Monty Python was a huge, big deal. And those guys, just between those two things, um, I mean, Fawlty Towers was, you know, there's, um, you know, there's, uh, that influenced American television hard. Like, uh, I mean, uh, SCTV influenced SNL. Like, like yeah. SNL probably wouldn't be here today if they didn't basically take everything that SCTV was giving it. They're still doing premises like Half Wits, you know, uh, uh, you know, that was, that went into Jeopardy with Will Ferrell and everything like that. And he asked, right. you know, Norm MacDonald asked, you know, Eugene Levy if he could write that for the show and he got his blessing. Oh, wow. And that's when that was all, that was all okayed because that was basically a Half Wits ripoff. Right. They're still doing it. They're still doing it. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting to see just like how cinema Hong Kong, like America is really good at taking things and making it their own. Like cinema Hong Kong, uh, when that came through, even like with Steve Odekirk, um, he wrote Patch Adams and Ace Ventura too. I told, yeah. I told him about cinema Hong Kong, like uh, while he was writing um, Ace 2. And then he, uh, I told the Iron Monkey uh, was the one movie I told him about that was a really good cinema Hong Kong movie. And then he ended up um, uh, buying the rights to a a cheesy martial arts film and making and re-editing it and putting himself in it um, uh, and calling it Kung Pao. So, <laughs> and then, but like that was Tarantino taking from cinema Hong Kong. That, right. That was, that changed that, you know, John Wick, obviously, you know, it just steamrolled. It hit about, what years was that? 1994. 1995 was about right. that time where they basically all these, you know, all these similar Hong Kong films, America lashed onto that shit hard. And then that just changed action films right. in America. Um, so we're a high, I guess it's just taking the best and making it, I don't know, there's a lot of copying. Let's just say that. Yeah, um, but a co copy, but with, with bravado. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like really leaning into the copying yeah <laughs> and uh um so how do you think uh the uh art you guys are in a uh, lockdown again over there yes. right yes and you and is it like what's the what are the directions uh what are the what's the protocol uh that um yeah so only essential travel outside of your house uh grocery stores and if you have to work outside of your home but no haircuts for months. I can't even remember the last time. And yeah, no social gathering. Um, it's just been, it's been a long go. I think that there, there is some stat floating around that Toronto has been the most locked down city this whole time. Um, so anyway, I mean, I understand it's for a good reason, but it's just, it's, it's been a lot to, to handle <laughs> with the winter it's it, that was rough but now that we have the spring it's like okay home stretch we can yeah. do this so did you guys ever get any out of lockdown at all was there any like getting semi out of lockdown and then you guys dip back in it or was <laughs> flat had, it was pretty flat we had many many loosenings of restrictions and there i remember there's one day in the spring 
where it was one of the first nice days and people were just losing it and wearing shorts like it was still really cold but people were just like ah you know like beach. and and the government had said quite quickly the ford government had said oh yeah by the way everybody can have a patio now to the point where people i was on the street just waiting for my sister and I turned around and there was like a patio behind me. I mean, like people were just running around with chairs, like, oh, patio. It was like putting chairs anywhere, you know, because they're desperate to get customers and make money. And then boom, that got shut down. No more patios. So we can't, you know, there's no outdoors seating. It's just, it's, it's rough for businesses, that's for sure. Um, and then the big box stores are at 25% capacity now and they've blocked off like, areas that they deem non-essential so it's <laughs> like caution oh tape on clothes and stuff it's uh it's pretty wild i mean it's i mean toronto is a massive city and driving around it feels like a small town mm -hmm. you see five people you know on the biggest streets and young street and you're just like wow this is wild i mean it, it truly is empty it's empty yeah are you people the vaccine situation what's that like over there well, we've had a little bit of um, some issues because we don't make the vaccines here, I understand. So it has taken a bit of time to roll out. And um, in Ontario, we just allowed, they just moved the, the line down. They're going by age groups right now. So they just uh, lowered it to 40. So the 40 year olds are getting theirs now. Um, and then I guess they'll lower it after, but it has definitely, it's taken a while. Um, people have been pretty critical of the government for that. Um, and then also there's a bigger gap between when we get our shots, um, there's get, telling us, I think four to five months to wait, which is different. Yeah, that's, um, that's uh, so uh, like when people get this, uh, is it like a second shot sort of situation? Yeah. To so they yeah. want people to wait like four months between the second shot and the first shot? Yeah, yeah. pretty sure that's, that's the latest word on the street. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a really bizarre actually. Like I, I could get, I had the opportunity to get mine a couple of weeks ago when they lifted their age restriction. And honestly, it was, it was totally bizarre like how you get it like you don't just go somewhere you have to get on the list and then I didn't get on the list and then I was just walking around to pharmacies like hey like with my arm out like hey you guys have any leftovers like yeah. and I, no, they didn't have leftovers and then somebody told me oh go to your family doctor and I said what that's even a thing and I called my doctor and they gave it to me but that was hidden information they actually have this twitter account called vaccine hunters people are hunting they don't know where they are and the information is really hard to find which well, is bizarre yeah they have yeah. It over here like uh, it's getting pretty i guess i gotta get mine pretty soon uh there's i have a feeling people it's gonna come to a point where if you don't have it people aren't gonna want to hang out with you yeah uh because uh and there's a certain pressure over here where like uh you get your vaccine or you get a vaccine you know sometimes uh you know, people, I'm so socially, uh, you know, like w everyone wants to be social. I, like, uh, I was talking to a girl she's all, you got your vaccine. And I hadn't, I was like, is she hitting on me? Is this the way this, this is going to go? Is like, that's the, you know, Hey, what's your sign? Hey, what's your vaccine situation? Like, yeah. That's, she, that is she, she new language for sure. She wasn't hitting on me. <laughs> uh, I was wishing because we're so all fucking socially deprived over here. It's like, uh, we have our, uh, cafes are pretty open in LA. And, oh yeah on the outside it's crazy it's a streets are locked off and people like in santa barbara state streets just all just booming like like just like it looks nuts uh right. and on main street in santa monica and stuff like that but um yeah it's uh it's pretty wild this is uh, i think we're getting through well it sounds like you guys i mean you're like behind a we're little still bit in it. yeah we're behind <laughs> we're definitely behind yeah yeah yeah, this is going to be, oh, what a pain in the fucking ass this has whole been. But, you know, we're changing. Everything's changing from this. I, you know, we, I yeah. mean, I'm no doctor or historian at all, but I mean, it seems like we're going to maybe learn something from this and not go back to like in, you know, auditions in person until they get the second or third call or whatever. 
Yeah. Um, so are you um, planning on staying over in Toronto? I guess if you get a gig, then you'll you'll go wherever you need to go. Like, uh, but for right now, you're in yeah. Toronto. I like in my career to be migrant fruit, migrant fruit worker. Like I yeah. go where the orchards are, where the fields are. And I'm happy to do so um, and lucky to do so. And uh, yeah, so wherever the next gig is, I will be there. Um, but for the moment, I am here. Here. <laughs> yeah. In, in full bloom. Yes. Um, so let's talk about your podcast. Yeah. Tell us about um, what may, I know that you're doing a little bit with other people. It's a, not just you, right? Or is it? Yeah. Uh, so no, it's, just um, basically tell, tell us how you began it, why you uh -huh. began it. And right. since you're one episode in, what, because I think <laughs> it might be interesting for people to, because everybody's got their own podcast now. If I have my podcast, True. everyone's True. got their own thing. Everybody. Even has. Conan, Conan O'Brien just quit his TBS uh, show. He's going full podcast full time. Wow. Fantastic. Well, yes. So I, um, first story about how I became obsessed with podcast is, I mean, this is a very narrow-minded obsession. I, I just listened to Tim Ferriss. He's the only person I listen to. Who is that? Religiously, Tim, Tim Ferriss. Okay. He, uh, yeah, you know, he started, I feel like maybe five years ago. Anyway, he's a human guinea pig is how I describe him. And I just love his format, love his guests. And uh, so, yeah, I became really into that, that sort of, you know, interaction and listening to it and, and how the discussions flow. Um, and then once I came back to Toronto, um, there's this group here called Indie Film TO and uh, the gentleman that runs it, Kurt, he's really great at sharing information about film funding, which is, um, it's kind of a secret, a bit of a secret topic here. We're very lucky in Canada to have government funding, but it's a bit of a matrix. It's a little confusing. And having come back from the States, um, I'm not super tapped into what's happening. So I was following his, uh, his sort of indie film email list and whatnot. And then he had this opportunity for someone to uh, host a podcast. And, um, and I jumped at it. And so I had my first one um, where I spoke to a producer here. And I'm, I really, being a creative person myself, I love talking to other people about their process and what works for them and what doesn't. And um, combine that with the logistics of, you know, the business side of it and the technical side of it I find it it's fascinating to me and I can talk all day about it so it it, it really um hit a lot of notes for me to be able to to do this um, and we have our next one hopefully on Sunday with a director and producer and it's it's just uh, it's really fun mm -hmm. yeah the uh are you guys doing it through Zoom or what do you guys do it through? Yeah, we're doing it through Zoom. And um, now on the technical side, my battery is about to run out and I am outside. <laughs> okay, go grab, go grab your, uh, can you plug in? I don't know, I never have. Um, let me try it, let me try it. Oh, uh, try it. We'll okay. see if you can plug or in. Or I might have to move you inside, but I don't want to change the... The natural landscape. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like an alien visiting the planet every day. It's my life to be story. Honest. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that way too. I'm constantly in awe and shock of how the world works. I'm like, what? How did I not get that memo? Yeah, and life and uh, mortality and, you know, totally. life and death. And, you know, like uh, my dog's passed away, like uh, at the oh. beginning, at the uh, 2020, like uh, seven days before 2020. And two weeks after 2020, three weeks apart, they passed away uh, from each other. But uh, and then the pandemic hit in uh, February, or March, March, I think. Um, uh, but uh, this whole like I'm 52 now and life has gotten, you know, relationships have been lost in these last and also gained in these last, you know, mm. 
times of Trump bullshit and pandemic on top of it. I mean, I've I've lost a lot of friends to that that probably I don't know a lot of it's put a strain on a lot of relationships. But I mean, mm. people come and go through your life, but like inevitably, it seems like um, I don't know the the friendships that hold together through this are even strengthened by this maybe. But um, life is a wild trip, man. When we only get one, it's a one way it trip. Is. It's like you know. Uh, it's who lives and who dies and who sticks around and what's after that. And this, the crazy wonder of reality is, is wild. Like from, you know, microscopic to, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole thing is pretty crazy life. <laughs> when you break it, I know it's wild, right. With chemical reaction and yeah, animals i'm not really too worried about people i'm more worried about the animals but i think the animals and the planet will inevitably be fine unless we get like a solar flare which would only a solar flare would wipe out which they say would happen maybe happen uh would wipe off like a uh, just a quarter of the planet just a quarter of, yeah okay well, we'd still be going then so that's cool yeah but that a quarter is a lot of humanity <laughs> <laughs> um but uh what um so we got about 10 minutes to fill what do you want to talk about now that is interesting you and and is there any topics that you want to talk about in particular that maybe i'm not thinking about just just to give you because you have your own podcast what is what yeah i yeah but i mean uh huh that's a good question i've just been so in the the filmmaking zone you know we can, um, do you want to do do you want to interview me right now yeah what are you working on oh god <laughs> right now i'm working on a buzz <laughs> um uh i've been painting a lot and i've been doing these uh you know editing these up to 40 year my 42nd episode um mostly uh you know just trying to be productive as much as possible and um um trying you know the the you know not being i don't know the anxiety of this whole thing and you know it kind of goes up and down and stuff like that so i'm really basically working on paintings and um what kind of paintings are you doing now um well i got these little gosh i got all sorts of stuff i got like some heavy palette knife stuff um um i'll show you one real quick i'll see if i can show you yeah i can see the blue i can see that blue painting in the background there yeah that that's more of a graphic -y bird thing but this is a uh oh, wow. palette knife wow and is that acrylic or is that it's oil that's oil yeah wow. so i mean i've been doing a lot of stuff like that you know the graphic -y stuff is like this is, I think, for Linda Swan. Linda, I, I owe this. I owe Linda. She's an actor. Um, I owe her this painting. So, Linda, if you're out there watching this, this is for you. Yeah, that's um, beautiful. I love the blues. Yeah, it's loose. You know, it's graphic-y. It's loose. It's it's fun. It's a little bit more. It seems simple, but it does get like ornate. There's an idea behind it. Um, but I, you know, inevitably, I want this podcast. I. <laughs> I want to make my fucking movie, my dark comedy yeah. return to sender. And so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to, you know, learn, I'm learning from doing these podcasts. I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully making stronger connections and hopefully, you know, by t discussing some of these things, we can cross reference them to see how different people are doing different things. And so maybe it might click or trigger ideas on, Am I doing this or should I do this? Or, you know, just kind of basically the whole point of this podcast is to make my movie inevitably. But if I make my movie, maybe I'll still do these podcasts. But I mean, it's a feature dark comedy. It, I know it's good. Uh, I wrote it with my writing partner, Steve Oaks, uh, who's got a good book. Uh, anyways, um, but, you know, I'm just trying to remain as productive as possible and not go nuts during yeah. this thing. Yeah, you don't want to go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Productivity is key. And I think what you're doing on so many different levels, I think the painting, 
filmmaking and podcasts, I think that they all lend, they all lend to each other. And it's, you know, in a results driven society, sometimes it's hard to keep the faith and, you know, trust that when you can't see the results, the tangible results, sometimes it's hard to, um, to trust that things are actually happening, but they are. And in each, I, I do believe in each um, way that you are expressing yourself, they, you know, it's it's all to an end, but sometimes it's hard to see what that end is when you're in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you gotta just, I mean, there's no audience reaction. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get people to push these likes. I turned off the comments to mm -hmm. uh, my podcast because um, there's just trolls out there, like people putting up like porno things or like, you know, there's, I don't know who, who's in it. So I turned off my, I don't know if that's gonna help for you or your podcast, but I turned off my comments. Okay. But uh, just because there's, there's um, people are putting things there that weren't making sense. And, you know, like, I didn't know who these people were and it wasn't necessarily right. a negative reaction. It wasn't, it was just like people putting info there or trying to get people to, to go to their websites or whatever. Right. But um, that was a learning curve to this. Is like, okay, right. we're just going to fucking turn these things off. Um, and hopefully people will push them likes, push those likes, smash those likes, smash and, those likes. and share, share these videos. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we're in a very like, I mean, you guys, you're feeling it a little bit more over in Toronto, but. I, I, with the lockdown still i can't even imagine we're i don't know my my big thing is i hope this doesn't come back and with a more aggressive another virus that's aggressive or if it does we know how to the protocol more on how to handle this right if it happens again in say 30 40 or whatever years or whatever or yeah time. but uh yeah i mean hopefully we'll be better prepared it's definitely shaped the shaping media for sure like like films uh hollywood got tore uh, got its ass tore out and uh and all those movie theaters like movie theaters just opened i was over and um i guess there are some movie theaters are open in la right now which kind of right. blew my mind i was like oh shit i could go see nobody right now if i wanted to in a movie theater wow um but are we gonna want to do that mm. you know i say yes <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm an idealist or I, th I think yes. I mean, we're programmed to we're programmed to be together. That's what this whole pandemic has been so against our programming. It's humans we need to connect. We're wired to connect, and this whole thing has been no, don't connect. Well, yes, on different ways, but not in the ways that, that are innate to us. And uh, I do believe that it's going to come back. Everything's going to come back even stronger, like Roaring Twenties style, like. I think people are going to go nuts and uh, why wouldn't they? This has been against human. This whole thing has been against human nature. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, I think that movie theaters and everything, they're going to, it's going it, to, it will be different, but I think that we're all going to, um, it's going to be a really exciting time. And uh, people are, because people have changed, people aren't going to take certain things for granted. I've noticed even just, daily interactions people are 10 billion times kinder mm -hmm. and uh you know i feel like people have finally maybe only momentarily realized what's important i mean we're only here for a short period of time it does nobody any good to treat people badly and uh yeah i think that it's i i'm actually looking forward to it and i'm not going down the doomsday rule i refuse <laughs> yeah People, want, I mean, everyone here is really excited. Like when there's a, you know, going out to a restaurant here is very exciting. And if it's just hanging out with yourself or being distance and eating with people in an outdoor setting, we, yeah. there's an excitability here. There's, there's like right. people want to be and their enthusiasm is, is you can see I it. There are people really want to be with each yeah. other. Yeah. Even, even if they're not making eye, you know, they're still, it's LA. Right. People don't make eye contact. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. But I want to be near you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your eyes, avert your eyes. But um, yeah. human. But I think people are being people want to be in contact with each other and create things and definitely and they're excitable and they want to do. I don't know. It's just um, 
I don't know. Hopefully the enthusiasm carries over and we don't forget so. about what we've just been through. And yeah. because there's a lot of cool things to, to do, you know, like, I don't know. We're that pre- uh, we're in the future. We're living in the future. And yeah, we are. Uh, and we're defining it as we go, you know? Yeah, and the moon loop, you know, and Mars is happening, you know, and all these different like and technology with the phones is is you know, everything's like if we're it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out in the next like I don't know, every day is a day a new day, right? It was like we're all in a now moment sure. more than ever now. If you're not, yeah. if you're not seeing, if you're not in a mount now moment now, then I don't know what's gonna make people <laughs> yeah, exactly. that moment. You'll never be. Was, it's true. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a well. I'm still like uh, thinking, you know, I'm still not going out a lot. I'm trying right. to keep it, keep it focused on, you know, as I was painting by myself anyways before this, and so I'm sort of used to being by myself a little bit. Right. Um, but um. But uh, yeah, this is uh, we're in uncharted territory. One hundred percent, which I I think is really exciting and fascinating. The the paradigms have shifted, and uh, I'm really excited to see what comes out of it and who the new thought leaders are and how structures are going to be rearranged and even political movements I, I really feel like this we can't go backwards from here no no we're in it we're in it we got a yeah. it's one-way road <clears throat> yeah so we're gonna wrap it up all right can you hear uh, that uh lawnmower situation it's very exciting that that someone's yeah, actually here. able to <laughs> cut their lawn oh that's a big that's, a, that's progress <laughs> yeah it is um so how can people see your podcast or find out more about you, your Instagram, your Facebook, or your Absolutely. podcast? How can they watch that? Yeah. Um, well, uh, we'll, put a, we'll put a link in the bio for the podcast. And then my Instagram handle, you can follow me on Instagram at virginia.kingston. Uh, that's the best way to see what I'm up to. And yeah. Um, yeah, I'll post modeling pictures, commercials, and then any filmmaking updates and uh, podcasts as well. Um, Elway, and um, what was there? Um, any last thoughts that you want to leave with us today besides? Oh, how, any last, last words? Um, I feel like it's time for a motivational speech right now. Do it. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I just feel like it's, uh, I think, it, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful to be able to do the work that I do and interact with the people that um, mm -hmm. I interact with. And, and I'm looking forward to collaborating in so many different mediums. And uh, I'm actually, like I said before, I'm actually excited about the end of the pandemic and, and how it's all going to play out. And I feel like a lot of, there has been a lot of tragedy, obviously, but I, I do believe that a lot of really good things have come out of this. And, um, and I'm excited to see how, how everything's going to change. Yeah, me too. Me too. I concur. <clears throat> well, uh, Virginia Kingston, thank you very much for being on my little podcast um Thank you, it's been a pleasure i look forward to checking out your podcast too you can't say the name of your podcast or can we can we say the name of it or uh, it's indie film to is the is the name of the the um collective that i'm under but i don't have the actual i don't know what the handle is if you just go on indie film to you and then the podcast okay. yeah okay yeah well i will talk to you in the future be safe Wonderful. Thank you um, as well. I, thank you. And um, stay warm over there. Thank you. Keep keep creating. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. yes, yes. Thank you. So, thank you Bye. so much. Yay. See, that was fun. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. Getting the brights in my eyes. All right. That was Virginia Kingston. And this is the 42nd episode of Breaths with Friends. 
and it's a lovely day out there. Be safe. Check out my website, brettwoods.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Brett Woods, B R E T T W O O D S 2 2 on Instagram. Um, check out my movies, push those likes, share these videos. Um, that's it. Oh, and thank you, Moksha. I'm gonna, we're going to keep on playing those and wedging those in these things. And I'll see you guys in the future. Hey, Jabba Wonka. Message on the message. Oh. 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 Oh.